Hi folks, welcome back to the hoard. Uh, quick video, today's topic is this uh, Kohler engine. I think you guys can see that right. So it's a Kohler PS-CH740 0054 BA 27 horsepower. It has a horizontal crankshaft. Um, came off of a large piece of uh, lawn equipment. Um, it was a Craigslist deal. I paid somewhere around 50 bucks for it. And I was trying to get it to spark, so I removed those two wires there, and I couldn't get it to spark. And since then, you know, I asked the YouTube community, what am I doing wrong? And you guys very, very quickly got back to me. Um, WTBM123, Terry, Lakeside Ranch, uh, Wizard. Um, there was a bunch of you guys. I can only remember three things, so if I forgot anybody, please forgive me. Um, you guys got right back to me and told me what I'm up to. Particularly, um, my buddy, uh, Wizard, my newest buddy, um, gave me the wiring diagram for this plug right here. And on that plug is a white wire, which is how you turn the engine off. It turns off this remote, um, ignition system that we'll talk about a little bit more. Purple, um, you do have a, um, stator in here and it goes to a couple of diodes and then it comes out as DC power from the engine and that goes to the voltage regulator green is ground uh, red and there's kind of a double red wire here um, what that does um, for a living is that's uh, DC power to the ignition <coughs> What our friends at Kohler did with this is um, instead of just using these two coils and leaving them be from a timing point of view that they're just timed to the, um, to the position of the crank, the position of the magnets on the flywheel, what they did is they went with some electronics so that they could advance the ignition when you're running this thing at speed. Um, what do you get out of that? You get a little more power, a little better fuel efficiency, um, mostly more efficiency. Um, but unfortunately, um, not, not their best system. They have different names for these systems, <coughs> and I'm not even going to bother talking about that. Um, but what you do need to know, when it acts up, there, um, corrective action, their, their replacement kit, is to go back to um, non-advanced um, ignition, a non-advanced ignition system. You know you're at the non-advanced ignition system because you see there's two wires, there's two connections on that one. And you can see two connections on that one. Um, the non-advanced version has one connection, a white wire goes to it, and when you touch that white wire to ground, you, um, you're turning the engine off. Um, and you obviously have to touch both white wires to ground, um, because if you don't, instead of turning the engine off, you just make the engine limp along on uh, one cylinder, the one that you didn't touch the white wire to ground with. So, um, I, I also did some research, and there's a couple of videos up where um, a guy had one of these um, from a, a tractor, well-known uh, <laughs> box store um, that the tractor was no good um, the engine was no good any longer it, it had a um, um, the rod I think one of the rods um, had it had broken loose so um, he pulled the um, single 
connector versions off of that, the non-advanced versions off of that. Put it on and that's how he was uh, firing it up. Um, there's also a kit available through Amazon. Oh, shoot. I shouldn't have said that the major <laughs> the major um, uh, box store that you don't have to go through an auction or the major um, electronic catalog that you don't have to go through an auction and there's also um, you could also buy the kit through the one where you do go through an auction but it's a buy it now and in both cases it's about 85 bucks and you'll know you have the right kit because what it does it comes with like a few wire ties a white wire with connection for both of these and um, you'll see the um, the coils only have a single connection on them um, you do have to pay attention to what kind of engine you have I don't know if the flywheels get bigger or smaller which would affect the angle right the the arc so to speak that those things would cast around the flywheel and when you bolt them on do yourself a favor make sure that you gap them properly and that you gently turn the flywheel a couple of times because if you have an uneven spot on the flywheel or whatever and as it's turning when it's running and it um, hits your thing it could these just bolt up to like aluminum mounts and that whack could um, break those aluminum mounts off and at that point you no longer have an engine you have a problem I guess you could attempt to weld them on or glue them back on or whatever but um, this engine's meant to run somewhere around 3600 rpm with all kinds of heat and vibration and all kinds of other stuff and if they get loose you could just imagine the damage they would do as they come winging about with in, inside this uh, this case I mean just think of the poor mice how scared you would have them as that um, ignition module went winging about um, you could kind of see that it's a little uh, wet here that's with gasoline and if you're trying to do this remember it's wise to have batteries and cylinders and gasoline and all that all stacked up in a um, interesting way uh, just before you uh, you do your experiments so let's I just hooked up the ground click and um, anybody who's listening might have heard a um, relay engage um, and then if you uh, I'm gonna attempt to push this button down and hold the camera and do choke all at the same time and we're going to do a cold start right this is a nice cold start I just made sure she sparks but let's see if she starts up I'm also going to kind of hold the engine down boy she's a nice running engine huh I mean she just sits right there and hurts where I put my hand. Boy, that's a nice running little engine. And to turn it off. I just disconnected the power. I don't want it to get too hot because I got like things leaning against it that probably aren't meant to get all that hot. I'd really rather not come back later and discover that uh, my garage is a smoldering mess. So there we are. Um, I I have to be honest with you. I I am thrilled 
um, with this engine. Uh, it seems to run real nice. Um, I like the way it, the RPM, <coughs> excuse me, go down nice, nice and uh, nice and slow. Um, doesn't look like I need to rebuild the carburetor. Everything seems to be really good there. Um, when I put fuel into it, I also put some um, um, fuel stabilizer and some um, additive that um, I frequently use my own little concoction to kind of keep the carburetor uh, clean. Um, so anyway, I'm I couldn't be happier. What am I going to do with this engine? And that's that's kind of where I'm. Um, scratching my head a little bit um, it would be a great engine for I have um, a big SS16 with the Onins on it but I kind of should get see what I'm gonna do with that Onins first also which means I should get that started and I've kind of been thinking about um, putting a diesel on that I have a few Kubota um, diesels I think there's three of them loose in the hoard, so I'm considering putting one of them on it. Um, I've also considered that making that a um, a two-engine tractor. Just put a um, you know a six and a half horsepower clone, and uh, use that to start a ten horsepower um, diesel that I have floating around that does not have an electric starter on it. I'm, so I'm not, you, you know, that's my problem. I have too many options. If I only had one engine and one tractor, there wouldn't be much of a debate, right? This engine would have to go on that tractor. So I always get myself tied up in these little knots. Well, hopefully um, I didn't stray into any um, any words that uh that trigger my friends um in the meantime folks i want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing please remember to keep your feet down your heads up and get out and enjoy each and every day bye now folks